you know sheikh somebody mike khan has asked you know sheikh abdul jabbar yeah i do actually i i know sheikh abdul jabbar recently shared uh, a message i sent him a message somebody asked me about you know i'll people i'll share something with you you see sheikh abdul jabbar i when it comes to viewpoints perspectives we may be polarized opposite ends we may be i mean i totally don't you know i don't obviously believe in the whole jinn possession and demonic possessions and stuff like that and and somebody had sent me a clip saying do you know this sheikh and you know like basically what the hell you know mufti why don't you <laughs> have a go at sheikh jabbar abdul jabbar and and I can and and I said in the comment I said this is Qadi I call him Qadi Abdul Jabbar I said even the shaitan seeks refuge before messing with Qadi Abdul Jabbar <laughs> The reason I say Qadi is there was a famous scholar in the past called Qadi Abdul Jabbar You see I have immense respect uh for Sheikh Abdul Jabbar uh, and a soft spot um a forever soft spot in my heart mm -hmm. Uh, when it comes to Sheikh Abdul Jabbar, and I and I'm gonna share this with you. You see, people, you have to remember something. At the end of the day, the most important thing is always the human connection. It is always the human connection. And as there's uh, there's a a poem I've quote it, I quote it often actually, an Arabic poem where it says Ahsin ila nasi tasta'bid kulubahumu wa la ta'lama sta'bad al-insana ihsanu that show ihsan, this kind of kindness, this humanness, humanity to people that it has for so long captured the hearts and this is how one truly captivates the heart you know there was a time in a few years ago <laughs> in my life when i went through a very testing i went through some very testing circumstances um and there was a whole you know it was it was very i mean and i to be fair i you know took you know kept my chin up during the whole thing but it was a very kind of uh uh, a testing time it was very pressing and there was um the, 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 it was tense there was a lot of pressure um it was the time that you know i uh, p many people know that i helped out a certain friend and i ended up because of that uh going to prison as well for a short time and there was this whole thing and there was a lot going on and obviously there's my uh, family who were going to suffer as a consequence and other people and because obviously and there was a point of uh, undetermined outcome when when I wasn't sure what exactly was going to happen and it was a very because it was a very difficult time just to give you an idea I, I remember that one of the actually that uh, <laughs> that actual uh, day when I was going to um, to the sentencing you see, one of the most difficult things was actually mm -hmm. that, you know, that, that kind of ride <laughs> going there and that morning. And I, because there was the potential that, you know, this may be it and you're going <laughs> to, you're going to go on a nice little vacation. And I remember my daughter, Layla, was probably just about three. And I remember she woke up that morning. And she doesn't normally, she never used to normally get up that kind that early. And she did. And she woke up. And I think she just wanted to go to the toilet or something. And she woke up and she and I was getting ready to go to, to court. And and she had woken up and she said, Oh, uh, and she just came and said, Oh, and she she asked me, Oh, where are you going? And and I just said, Oh, yeah. And she said, Oh, you are you going are you going to work? And I said, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just going to work. I said, you go, you go back to sleep. But it was really difficult as a parent. These kind of things, the, the, the difficulty that that one goes through, 
it's beyond words, it's immeasurable, the uncertainty factor. So it was at that kind of time in life. I mean, I'm not saying on that day, but that time of that time in life, that, that the, those months and weeks, that Sheikh Abdul Jabbar, he actually came to visit me. He, I mean, I didn't ask him. He just he just came to visit me off his own back and he turned up to my house on his own. And he just and he, he'd come to hear of that. I was going through certain um, certain you know testing times that there was certain issues and there was this whole kind of hearing and things like this now and he and i have to say he came and he he kind of to to just for that support and he, and he he shared some words with me he shared some personal stories and he told me that look listen whatever happens don't give up on allah and i seriously have to say that you know at that time his words meant so much to me it's it's amazing that you could be going through something and it's not that you don't know these things but it's as as the as the verse in the quran says dhakir fa inna dhikra tanfa'ul mu'minin you know that remind people that the that a reminder helps the people of faith and Sheikh Abdul Jabbar, he came to my house, he came to my home and he kind of sat there and he told me about some story, his personal, some personal stories when he went through some very difficult times and how everything was salvaged and saved at the, in the end and how, you know, tawakkul, he, he had this tawakkul al Allah, this tawakkul, that, this kind of reliance on Allah and God and how God was there for him. And I have to say that this really, um, it meant so much for me at that time. And it gave me it such a, like it kind of boosted my support mechanism, my internal mechanism. And I really deeply till this day appreciate that he, because he didn't have to, you know, if anything, like, and I'll tell you something, because my views are nothing like the the views of maybe Sheikh Abdul Jabbar. It was so different in our perspectives. He could have said that, oh, you know, oh, Mufti is just a deviant. He could have said that. He could have said, and this is another thing that some Muslims resort to sometimes. Oh, this is a punishment from God for this person. Ha, ha, ha. Serves him right. You know, it's ridiculous. There's recently that, um, you see, I don't follow rapping and the rap culture so closely, but there was recently that uh, drill artist or rap artist that got stabbed in, in Birmingham. And some Muslims, because he used uh, uh, part of Surah Fatiha in a rap video, and some Muslims were offended that why did he say Alhamdulillah and things like this in a video. So when he got stabbed recently, some Muslims had commented, serves him right. And unfortunately, Muslims can suffer from this kind of uh, very, a very pernicious and cancerous kind of attitude that when they see something bad happening to someone, they say, oh, this is God punishing you. Ha ha ha. And it's crazy. But religious people do that. And this could have been like Sheikh Abdul Jabbar could have taken a stance like that. He could have said that, you know, this guy is an absolute look at him. He's, he's a deviant. He, dis, he makes, you know, he deems all these things to be halal or whatever. And, or at the least, he could have just ignored the situation. But he went out of his way to come to my home and to kind of sit there and talk to me and to tell me that look listen forget about everything else right now your morale might be low but i want to tell you just hang in there and that you know forever has captured my heart at least so i will forever have a soft spot for sheikh abdul jabbar you know may allah forever preserve him and keep him smiling i disagree obviously on views with him 
And and I think we can always disagree with anyone. You know, I can disagree with myself. I might have an opinion five years ago that I've changed today. But I feel that, you see, what it comes down to is the human character. And definitely to me, Sheikh Abdul Jabbar is a man of substance, is a man of character. So, so definitely, I mean, I, you know, somebody said, oh, Sheikh, you know, this Sheikh is going on about these stories. Look, whatever the Sheikh's view is, is his view. My view may be different, but I truly have, you know, like from my heart, du'as for, for him. Um, and similarly, I would like to echo that message to people. I do try, seriously. I try that sometimes if I come across, especially people that I may, that I know, if they're going through certain circumstances, I do try to, to kind of extend some support or some help. Um, and that's something that I would advise all of you that do that, because it really, it is the thing that counts. You know, it's not this, you know, this kind of uh, debating, this arguing. We can do that. I can, I can do that. You know, I, I love debating and philosophical arguments and doing this and doing that. And I feel that in some ways I, I, I'm kind of mentally wired for that. But, you know, this stuff is not what people remember. What they remember is the human element. You know, there's that famous story of uh, <laughs> those of you that are familiar with the, the Tabliki culture may have, may know of Haji Abdul Wahab Saab. He's the, the great um, Amir in Pakistan of the Tabliki Jamaat. Now, there was a story that he related where he mentioned that he said, you know, he met a person once. He was riding a train. And it was a long journey. It was going to be like a, an 11 hour trip or something. And he ended up sitting next to someone and he thought, well, you know, with the Tabliki Jamaat, they always want to give da'wah, da'wah. Let's give this person da'wah. <laughs> you know, like they say, da'wah, da'wah, let's do da'wah, let's do da'wah. So, and they feel kind of duty bound to give da'wah to someone every day. So he thought this isn't, you know, the guy can't leave. He's not going to get up and go. So this is an opportunity to preach. So he thought, look, how do I open, you know, because if I just start preaching, the guy might just say to me, look, listen, excuse me, if you don't mind, you know, I just like my peace and quiet. So what happened is <laughs> in the train, you had somebody come past, they, they come and sell things like some uh, savories or sweets or tea. So he, so he bought himself a cup of tea and he bought this guy a cup of tea. He said, oh, you know, can, can I have two cups of tea, please? And, and he handed one to him. The guy said, oh, well, thanks. And, and he said, I used that opportunity to preach. So he said, I preached to him for an entire something like nine hours. I preached and preached and preached and preached. And he says, you know, I'm fine. You know, we got to our destination and we parted ways. He says, you know, as it happened years later, I bumped into that individual. He came, I think the guy was traveling to the city of Lahore or something, and he bumped into him. And he said to him, he said, oh, Haji Saab. He said, and he said, oh, have we met? He said, yes, yes, yes. And he reminded him, he said, oh, we met in the train. He said, you bought me tea. <laughs> and Haji Abdul Wahab Saab, when he was retelling the story, he said, I preached to this guy for nine hours and he couldn't remember a damn word that I'd said, but he remembered that I brought him some tea. <laughs> that I bought tea for him, he remembered that. You see, because the, the human element people, that's what people remember. They don't remember the, who gives a damn about your lecture. <laughs> So, yeah, so I hope that's uh, 